Given a state space form of a system here, recall that we can change the states, that is we can change the X values and then the corresponding A, B, C matrices without changing the relationship between U and Y. That's called a similarity transformation and it has this form here. One useful similarity transformation is that which creates a diagonal A matrix. And a diagonal A matrix is useful because the eigenvalues of the A matrix correspond to the poles of the system. And if the A matrix is diagonalized, then the eigenvalues are the elements on the diagonal. We can diagonalize the system with the T matrix as follows. Let V1, V2, V3, and so on be the eigenvectors of A. We're not going to discuss how to calculate eigenvectors in this class. You'll have to go back and review your linear algebra. In most cases, we're just going to use MATLAB to compute the eigenvectors of A. And if we create a matrix T where the columns of T are the eigenvectors of A, then T inverse AT will be diagonal and we can use the transformation x is equal to zt to diagonalize our state space system and create a system in which the states are decoupled. This works great when the eigenvalues of A are real. When the eigenvalues of A are complex, it creates a little bit of a problem because it means that the eigenvectors are going to be complex, and then you end up with a system where the a matrix has complex values on the diagonal and you end up with corresponding complex values in the B and the C matrix. And although the math would work out in the end if you calculated the input output relationship from U to Y, it's very messy. And so instead of just strictly diagonalizing the matrix when there are complex values, we can put it in what's called a block diagonal form. If A has complex eigenvalues, then let's look at just one of those complex conjugate eigenvalue pairs. Then we'll have eigenvectors V1 and V2. They will be complex and they'll correspond to this one pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues, where V1 will have this form where it's a real part plus V imaginary times I and V2 will be V real minus V imaginary times I. If the eigenvalues are complex conjugate pairs, then the eigenvectors turn out to be complex conjugate pairs. And let's say that the corresponding eigenvalue has the form A plus or minus BI. Then let's let the T matrix have the form VR. The real part is one column and VI, the imaginary part, is another column. So we're not using both eigenvectors corresponding to the complex conjugate pair. We're just using the real part and the imaginary part. Then, if we do the transformation, we'll find that the system has a block diagonal form of this form where the A is on the diagonal and the B is this off diagonal, where the A corresponds to the real part of the corresponding eigenvalue and the B corresponds to the imaginary part of the eigenvalue. Let's look at this hypothetical example where I have an A matrix which has five eigenvalues. Four of them are complex, A plus or minus BI and C plus or minus DI and E. The system will also have five eigenvectors, where V1 and V2 are complex conjugate pairs, and they correspond to the eigenvalue A plus or minus BI. Same thing goes for V3, V4, corresponds to C plus or minus DI, and the eigenvector V5 is real, and it corresponds to the eigenvalue E. Since these are complex eigenvectors, we can write them as V real 1 plus V imaginary 1, and then we'd also have V real 1 minus V imaginary 1, because these are complex conjugate pairs. The same thing goes for this pair. Now I'm going to create a similarity transformation matrix T. For the first two columns of the similarity transformation matrix, I use the real and imaginary components of the eigenvectors corresponding to the complex eigenvalue A plus BI. That's right here. The second two columns, I use the real and imaginary component of the eigenvectors that correspond to the complex eigenvalues right there. And in the third one, I use the real eigenvector that corresponds to the real eigenvalue. And computing T inverse AT gives me a matrix in this form. This is a block diagonal form. Right here is a block of two by two that corresponds to those eigenvalues right there. I also have another two by two block right here. 
that corresponds to those eigenvalues. And I have this third block, just a one by one corresponds to that one. So I have block diagonalized my A matrix, and I can see right from the form of it what the eigenvalues are. A plus or minus BI, C plus or minus DI, and E. So we've looked at a system where all the eigenvalues are real and distinct, a system where the eigenvalues are complex or a mix of complex and real. There is a third case, and that's where the eigenvalues are repeated. The problem with repeated eigenvalues is that you also have repeated eigenvectors. And then the corresponding similarity transformation, v1, v2, and so on, is singular because you may have eigenvectors, v1 and v2, which are also repeated. In the case of repeated eigenvectors, instead of using the actual eigenvectors, you need to use something called the generalized eigenvectors. An eigenvector satisfies the relationship here. Now, I said before we're not going to do this calculation, but if you wanted to, you would calculate the eigenvector by putting in the eigenvalue, the A matrix, and then solving for the corresponding values in V1 would satisfy this equation. You can create a generalized eigenvector by satisfying this relationship where V2 is now one of the known eigenvectors and you're calculating V1 which will end up being a unique but generalized eigenvector. Then you will have two eigenvectors V1 and V2 which you can use in your similarity transformation matrix. What you will find is that the corresponding system after it's diagonalized will look like this. This is a block diagonal form and in this case I have two repeated eigenvalues and if you use the generalized eigenvectors to diagonalize the system you'll end up with these repeated eigenvalues on the diagonal but in a little block with the one here because these are now coupled together they're repeated. In this case I've put a third eigenvalue here just to show what would happen if you had a third eigenvalue that was not repeated and coupled to the other two. We are not going to do this calculation by hand and when we go to um, MATLAB I'll show you how to do it there.